check, 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 check. Check, check. We're really excited to introduce the new Soul Series 6. It's a very big departure from the original Soul. Although it looks similar and it still uses our coax loudspeaker driver, this is uh, a massive shift forward. The design of the Soul 6 really did begin in our heads. What we wanted a sound uh, to, to be, uh, how, it wanted, how it was to reproduce playback in your house. So we were looking at power spectrums, spectrum spreads, how it was going to integrate with your room, how it was going to sound not just in the sweet spot, but three feet to the right, 10 feet to the right, or out in the kitchen while you were making dinner. A very young Steve Vai, uh, not that I was there, but uh, check the YouTubes, uh, was trying to figure out a career in the music industry. And he, he was you know, gravitating towards Zappa because, of course. So Zappa meets Steve Vai. They start working together. And after about six months of uh, Zappa mentoring Steve and Steve, you know, contributing where he could, he asked Frank, hey, so tone, what should I do? How do I get more tone? What should I do to my guitar? What should I do to my rig? And Zappa looks at him and said, tone's in your head. And he walked off. And I, I'm a big believer. You have to know your design targets. They have to live inside your head before they can be expressed in the real world, in design or in anything else. And with Soul, our design targets, the new Soul 6, were very clear. We wanted the kick drum to sound real without after having to add a subwoofer to it. We wanted better accuracy, better guitar tone. We wanted more realness in the human voice and also cymbal rides, muted trumpet, mass strings, and the most minute details needed to be well-timed and throughout the sound field and in an even power spectrum so that things didn't sound boomy or thick in one region and not so in another region. So how did we get that to happen? With, uh, we knew that we wanted to do this coax and we wanted to keep the sexy form factor that is the soul, mid-century modern look in a size that is very livable. It's not going to interfere with the decor and the design of a room. And it's, it's also easy to handle. Um, some of the things that we looked at right out of the beginning were materials. How could we get less feedback into the driver and how could we get more driver transfer, add more of the power of the electrical signal into the sound in the room as opposed to movement or in thermal, uh, you know, a heater. We, we didn't want those things to happen. We wanted more transfer of that energy from your amplifier into your ears, into the room. And uh, so th that was a, in order to, for it to sound live, real, engaging, and again, have a unified sound field that was timed well. So we went back to our driver and we looked at our full range driver and what we could do with it. Um, it looks very similar to the original, but there are a fair number of significant changes. Um, how it is manufactured to uh, allow us to do a higher degree of tolerance, uh, better transfer of power from the cone into the air and then your ears. And also we wanted a higher, uh, a higher bandwidth. We wanted triangles, strings, cymbal rides to sound more compelling. Transient information, we wanted that to sound more real. So we, on that, we used the, uh, a, a really fantastic new tweeter that Eminence developed called the N151M. And that is attached to the back of our coax driver now. And And it, it is also fed by a network that is uh, totally revised. That network consists of the Jupiter copper cap. Uh, and it's a mon while a monopole, it is a, it's a fairly 
interesting network uh, developed by Rick Henthorn for us. Uh, Rick's a contributor here at Zoo. And what we did with the network was, was give it the extension on the top end, keep the 10, 12 kilohertz acoustic uh, crossover point, but we improved the, the purity of the signal. That we reduced the distortion through the use of a chip resistor made by Nick Ohm out in Japan, uh, the Jupiter cap, and then also a, a, a parallel coil that is it's not functioning as a, as a dual pole, but it's functioning as a monopole still. But it gives us the top end extension and the uniform power distribution throughout the room. So with some of those particular details, we were also looking at the materials of the cabinet. How could we make the cabinet better interface with the driver frame? While very efficient at 100 dB SPL, which is a bit more than the original sole, uh, we, we, had to, we had to reduce the cabinet noise, or the, the noise coming from the cabinet, and the amount of that mechanical energy that was feeding back into the driver itself. So we did that through uh, a change in the materials. Instead of being uh, largely MDF composite type wood, we went to a uh, Okame ply superstructured material. The material itself is, is quite thin. The Okame ply is 12 millimeter, half inch, but it's fully superstructured. As you can see in these photos and the, the detail here, the superstructuring of the cabinet is designed to both damp mechanical energy and move the energy away from the, the driver frame uniformly without having peaks and valleys so that the driver itself can give you more of what your amplifier is putting into it with less distortion so you have a cleaner, uh, easier, more relaxed, yet higher res resolution sound. There, in addition to the mechanical aspect of the driver and the cabinet interplay, we also looked really closely, of course, at the acoustic interplay between the driver and the cabinet, and the, the acoustic space in the cabinet. So in there, we, we built it so that we reduced standing wave antinodes, so that those antinodes not, were not, you know, pummeling the driver on the backside of the cone, so that those, those energies weren't clouding the sound, and we were also looking at ways to reduce turbulence within the inside of the cabinet to, open, to remove a lot of the noise that is just the, uh, the engineer trying to remove standing waves. By removing the acoustic standing waves on the inside, sometimes that causes additional problems of noise, and, uh, and those, those, those turbulent zo zones causing the noise again feedback in mechanically and acoustically to the driver. Addressing those gave us a, a really strong forward progress in the sounds that we wanted this to, to reveal. And again, we were able to get deeper bass out of the same footprint, the same size. We were able to get better highs and we were able to reduce harmonic distortion and improve the timing, the, the group delay, the, the timing between the different frequency wavelengths, that of a kick drum, that of a guitar, that of a cymbal or, or brass or stringed instruments, all reaching your ear at the same or as closely as possible so that we can get that really tight and timing section so that it sounds real, whether you're listening to it in your living room or you're listening to it while you're con you know, making dinner out in your kitchen area or whether you have a house party or even for that matter at 150 watt RMS power handling and 100 dB SPL 1 watt 1 meter, we could be having a block party or you know, a, a pretty healthy party uh, out in your backyard. The, the loudspeaker is is pretty impressive that way, able to give you a great sense of space and realism, whether you're listening to at concert levels or you're listening to it at really low levels because you don't want to wake up the neighbors or your, your, you know, your newborn or, or whoever else might be living with you. Um, for those of us that do care about uh, <laughs> the acoustic needs of others, sometimes I don't. Anyway, 
Uh, and then we also are still using the Zoo B3 interface and cable architecture. That's another area that we, ad we addressed. We tried to find ways to improve on that. We really didn't. Uh, that is one area that remains from Seoul, but that is about it. It is still a finger-ported design. It still uses the Grivy cartridge and uh, the Grivy uh, engineering principles that we originally employed with our first loudspeaker back in 2001 from the Druid. So it still uses those elements, so you can still tune the bass. You can still adjust the bass response for your room and for your ears and for your amplifier relationship with the gap between the bottom and your floor and the distance on those finger ports. Uh, Really excited. It, it may not be coming through, but this loudspeaker is the best loudspeaker we have ever built. Uh, it, it's small, it's light, it only weighs 40 pounds, and it's uh, very easy to live with, and it doesn't care about what material you throw at it. It doesn't care about the amplifier you hang on it. It just sounds excellent. Uh, you can hear those differences, of course, uh, quite easily. But the level of performance and the bandwidth we're getting uh, with the timing and relaxed qualities that it, pr that it produces, you can get away with listening to a, a massive array of, of amplifiers. So if you're considering the soul, you should dust off the amplifiers or receivers that you have in your house, hook them up and see how they sound because it may be just fantastic. It, it is the loudspeaker that we think that will last you the rest of your life and, and give you satisfaction for the rest of your life. We hope you're interested. If you have questions, uh, uh, keep digging or give us a call. We're happy to talk. Thank you very much.